In the beginning, there were only four. Shortly after the turn of the 20th century, Catholic Central joined the three public high schools in town, Central, South, and Union, in forming a new athletic conference, the Grand Rapids City League. For almost a century since its founding on fields and courts, in gymnasiums and pools all around town, the City League has been a sports home for 10 schools from the public, Catholic, and Christian systems. It was probably the only uh, element in Grand Rapids that kept the city uh, cohesively together, uh, socially, educationally. And they got along so well together and supported each other's schools uh, that it was rather unique in the country. It was a real important fab fabric of the entire community. And it was, you know, just fun being a part of that. It was, you could just sense it, feel it, and know that it was going on. The Central Rams, Creston Polar Bears, Davis Tech Wildcats, Ottawa Hills Indians, now Bengals, South Trojans, Union Red Hawks, Catholic Central Cougars, West Catholic Falcons, Christian, also Central Christian Eagles, and East Christian Panthers. Together, they produced hundreds of notable games, thousands of coaches, hundreds of thousands of athletes, and memories too numerous to count. Many who started here went on to greater glory. The 38th President of the United States, South Gerald Ford, played football here. So did Catholic Central's Mike Kadish and Central's Clarence Ellis, high school rivals who became All-American college teammates at Notre Dame before entering the National Football League as first-round draft choices in 1972. The one game, uh, football-wise, would be the Catholic Central game. And even though at the time it was probably the best game I ever played, what later I, I realized that was the game that Notre Dame came and saw me for the first time. They really were come to look at Mike Kadish, who was at Catholic Central. Larry Barczewski talked to the people at Notre Dame and said, you're coming to look at Mike Kadish. He said, but you need to look at this gentleman. And the uh, rest was history. Catholic Central's George Andre played for the Dallas Cowboys' doomsday defense and made it to the Pro Bowl five times. He played against the Green Bay Packers in the famous Ice Bowl at Lambeau Field in 1967 and returned a fumble for a touchdown. Central's Terry Barr and Hugh Blacklock, Ottawa Hill's Bob Lertzma and David Harris, Creston's Chuck DeShane, Catholic Central's Mike Keller, Union's Kelly Butler and West Catholic's Mike Frankoviak also went from the City League to pro football. In baseball, Ottawa Hill's Mickey Stanley became one of the heroes of the 1968 World Series for the champion Detroit Tigers. That same year, a nondescript central football player named Buster Mathis took the national spotlight in boxing, fighting Joe Frazier for the World Heavyweight Championship in Madison Square Garden. Floyd and Roger Mayweather, Tony Tucker, along with Mathis, were boxing notables. Marion Ladewig of Union rolled into the Hall of Fame as perhaps the greatest woman bowler in history, several decades before her sport reached the high school varsity level. Christian's Rich DeVos and his family own the NBA's Orlando Magic, as well as the Grand Rapids Griffins and Rampage. Central's Dave Rosema was American League Rookie Pitcher of the Year for the Detroit Tigers, the greatest letter winner in the history of Davis Tech Pete Melito was a longtime scout for the Chicago White Sox. Creston's Jim Command played for the Philadelphia Phillies and belted a Grand Slam home run off Carl Erskine for his first major league hit. Union's Rick Miller played for the Angels and Red Sox and now manages in the Boston organization. Ottawa Hills' Don Eddy was a multi-sport star at the University of Michigan before briefly playing in the big leagues with the Chicago Cubs. Catholic Central's Wally Pipp played first base for the New York Yankees and became a baseball footnote by losing his job to a guy who held it for a while, Lou Gehrig. West Catholic's Greg Meyer was the last American to win the Boston Marathon. 
Olympic caliber athletes like wrestler Jimmy Jackson of Ottawa Hills reached the pinnacle of their sports. When you were young, you dreamt about competing in the City League. It was such a marvelous, marvelous league. Flip on the television almost any night during the college basketball season, and you'll see Catholic Central's Ted Hillary officiating some of the best games in the nation. Catholic Central was not, quote unquote, a basketball school. We were known as a football school. I played, also played football, and the football season, of course, was 65, and then the basketball season runs over in the 66, but we set records at Catholic Central in football, and I don't think they've had a losing season uh, for a long time, but when I was a senior, we, we secured that losing season, so it was kind of, it was kind of down, a down year. Central's Paul Goble was a Big Ten official after his playing days at Michigan were done. Before he was winning championships as a coach at Union in Ottawa, Jim Eddy broke the color barrier as the first African-American official in the Big Ten. Milo Sukup was the pulling guard who led Michigan's Tom Harmon to the Heisman Trophy before a long coaching career at Union that included the mythical 1948 state football championship. There are 32 City League alumni in the Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame. City teams have won 59 state championships. And how about the places they played? How many of us have sat in the stands at Houseman or Southfield? or enjoyed a baseball game at Valley Field or Rumsey Field or Island Park or run through the hills at Richmond Park. Who is willing to admit they are old enough to remember basketball triple headers at Civic Auditorium or watching games from the balcony at Burton Junior High? The legacy of the City League will last forever even as the seven present member schools are writing the final chapter and preparing to take their separate places next year within the OK Conference. I always will be a City League guy. I, I, no matter what, you know, we may be in the OK Blue, OK Red, OK Green, you name it, OK Black, but I'll be watching the scoreboard, you know, and if I attend the game, I'm, I'm a City League guy. And those are the kids that I will, will cheer for. We know that uh, we have our work ahead of us, we have to do. I think our kids will, will, will do well. I think we'll surprise some people. Being competitive is all part of that good experience. Change is good sometimes, and sometimes we kick and scream when we have to make changes. You know, I just want to think positive, you know, about the changes that are going to take place and that it will be beneficial, you know, for all that are uh, going to be involved. It'll be a good shot in the air for Grand Rapids, I think, the whole, the whole area around here, Western Michigan. But that's in the future. For now, we remember the past. City League football was a big attraction in town in the early years. Before television overdose and the growth of suburban schools, huge crowds would gather. Newspaper accounts of the 1945 Catholic Central South game put the crowd at 17,000 at Houseman Field. The traditional rivalry was the annual Union South game on Thanksgiving Day. That was our big, big deal. We'd go to the football game, which was held at noon, I believe. Yeah, at noon, and, and most of the time, lousy weather, but you know, and low scoring, ties and six to nothing, that type of thing. But our whole family would go, and then we'd go home for Thanksgiving dinner afterward. That was a tradition. There were 10,000, they have bleachers on the end zones, and, and they have regular bleachers now, and it was quite a social event, should we say. Perhaps no game in that rivalry was more famous than the 1930 clash, the first one played at South Field. Future President Ford and South battled Union to a 0-0 tie in a snowstorm before 12,000 fans described as so many ice cream cones in Grand Rapids press accounts the next day. A week later, it was reported that Union star fullback Frank Cook had signed a pro baseball contract the previous summer and therefore was ineligible giving South the city and mythical state championship by forfeit. Five years earlier, Union also was in the football spotlight, also for a shutout, actually 10 of them. Coach John Truesdale's team was unbeaten and unscored upon in 1925, beating their opponents 248-0 to for a 10-0 record, a share of the mythical state championship in a place in the Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame, which inducted the team in 2004. 
But was that the greatest city football team ever? Central might disagree. The Rams had Grand Rapids' first state championship team in 1896 and an undefeated team in 1947, which only allowed three touchdowns all season. Catholic Central might have a claim here, too. Legendary coach Ted Sowell led the Cougars to mythical state championships in 1943, 49, 51, and 59 on his way to a state record 209 victories. In 1966, coach Larry Barcheski's central football team featured Jim Kemp, Eugene Grady, Keith Free, and Willie Beards, plus Ellis, and is regarded by many as the Rams' best ever. I was one of those late bloomers when you talk about sports. Um, more in the yard, playing with the friends on the street, you know, the organized ball, never did that, never did that. First time I put a uniform on, I was in 10th grade. In 1987, Catholic Central, coached by Jim Galvin, won the Class B state title, the only city school to claim a championship in the playoff era. And coach Sparky McEwen led Creston to the 1999 state finals. The Polar Bears, led by future college stars and NFL prospects, Reuben Riley, Turner Nandy, and Carlton Brewster are the only GRPS team to play in the state finals. Early on, the city also made a statewide name in other sports. Union won back-to-back -back basketball state championships in the early 1920s, beating Detroit Northern 29-15 to in the 1921 finals. That was a real shootout compared to the next year when the Red Hawks beat Kalamazoo Central in the championship game 27-9. to I think the first memory that I have from, for, from City League that I can vividly remember is my uh, the old timers uh, sitting around and talking about uh, their 1938 basketball team. My dad played and his teammates, they'd get together socially. Christian, led by Gene Brony and Henry Skolton, and coached by Klaus Bukema, claimed the 1938 state basketball title at a facility that had become the Hoops Palace of Michigan for its time, Grand Rapids Civic Auditorium. I used to joke with my father, talk about what a shooter he was, and how he never, you know, never took a shot he didn't like. And at 6'1", he was the, uh, the tall guy on the team, and uh, he jumped, he did the jump balls and everything, and uh, he couldn't touch the rim. So it kind of gave you an indication of how they played the game back then, kind of low to the ground. The Eagles received their trophy from a guy who knows a little something about basketball, Dr. James Naismith. Well, I also refereed for 20 years. I refereed basketball 20 years, 52 to 72. I came out of service, went to junior, uh, went to Burton Junior. There was a, a regional game there, basketball. Class D, Vermontville and Free Soil or somebody. And I'll never forget, I got there and I was sitting there and the teams came out on the floor and Vermontville came out with, with five guys dribbling five basketball, they came across the mid-court there, which was a heck of a long one. They all shot one-handed. And four of them went in, I think. And I said, what kind of basketball we got here then? Ottawa Hills won eight state championships in the 1930s and 1950s, two each in boys tennis, 1934 and 38, and golf, 1934 and 1952, and three in track and field, 1932, 34, and 51. The last one led by Bob Hendrickson, who placed in several events and later would pick up another state title in another sport as a coach in the next decade. It's one of those things that kind of happens. We won two in a row, but I go back to the first championship that we won. We were in the district tournament. We were playing Christian High School. They had a good team, a very good team. We were playing them in the district finals, and the score was tied with 20 seconds to go. They had the ball. You know, we had a timeout and talked about it, but you know, we were within 20 seconds of losing the game, probably, if they make, make a point. And they did everything well, we did everything well. Uh, a, a uh, player by the name of Heiser, I remember, shot the ball. Had a, he had a pretty good shot, but we, we, we talked about not fouling. We had to play good defense, but play it the right way. And uh, he shot the ball, 
it hit the rim and bounced a couple times on the rim, bounced up. I remember, I can see it in my dreams, bounced up. And, you know, one of those bounces that could have gone in or it could have gone out, it went out. Okay, so we had, in a sense, another chance. Because if we'd lost that, no state championship wouldn't have happened. Uh, we came back in the overtime, got things going a little better, and won the game. And went on from there to win a state championship. It was Ottawa Hill's finest basketball team. Uh, they were so good. I mean, they were 18-0, and 0, ranked maybe one or two in the state. We played them. Their home basketball court was Central Christian. We happened to win. They had beaten us twice during the year, and this was in the uh, this was in the district tournament. So they were knocked out of the tournament, and I and I apologized to have apologized to Bob for that win, because they were the better team. I, there's no doubt in my mind they were the better team. The 1960s brought great change in City League membership. West Catholic joined in 1962, boosting the conference to eight schools. It reached nine, an all-time high, three years later when Christians split into East and Central. Then, in compliance with court-ordered desegregation, South High School was closed in 1968. It took a lot of, uh, out of me, it took a lot out of, I think, out of the community closing that down as a high school. And I still, to, as of today, I have many regrets that, that that happened. I was part of a group of students that really rallied to try to stop that. And that may be the reason why we're so, we have a strong bond today. You know, the closing of the school, it, it made my senior year, you know, it was a good senior year, but it was, that was a down part of it. You know, that uh, an error, a, a, a big part of the community was being removed. Well, you know, we were young. Uh, you didn't, initially, uh, I think a lot of us didn't like it because we were, we were put in a, an, an environment that we weren't used to. Um, but I think as, as, as you get older and, 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 and become to appreciate different cultures, um, different things that you learn from different cultures, I, I think it was a pretty good move. And so the decade concluded with an equal number of public and non-public schools in the league for each. That lasted until 1973, when the Christian schools merged back into one and gave the city its seven members that lasted until the end. Southfield, that venerable football field at Cottage Grove and Madison Southeast, hosted its final games in 1969. The 60s were also glory years for the city on the basketball court. Many would argue that top to bottom, beginning to end, the hoops action and quality was never better. They were like 13 kids, 13 seniors who got basketball scholarships out of this city. It was amazing. It was amazing the level of basketball in 65, 66. South won six consecutive titles, five under coach Mike Murphy. During that stretch, Trojan star Lee Lafayette set the league scoring record of 54 points in a victory over West Catholic. But the Falcons came back later that season and upset South in the rematch described by press sports writer Joe Vanderhoff as the upset of the decade. In 1966, East Christian finished only fourth in the league, but coach Corny Bykirk's Panthers, led by Bill Vanderwoody and Bernie Kuyper, won the Class B state championship, defeating five-time defending champion River Rouge and legendary coach Lofton Green in the finals. And Ottawa Hills, coached by Bob Hendrickson and led by stars like Ernie Johnson, Larry Ike, and Otis and Pat Smith, closed out the decade by winning back-to-back -back Class A state championships in 1968 and 1969. That also earned a place in the Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame. In the 1970s, the City League boys made room for girls. I think the 70s for women, early 70s, was when it really started to come out. You know, it wasn't just your parents and your boyfriends going to your game. You know, fans actually started coming and it became interesting and, um, you know, there was skill involved, uh, you know, that had advanced beyond the one dribble half court concept, you know. So it was, it was fun and it was kind of eye-opening. 
Before I actually went into high school, I've been playing sports all my life. I have three older brothers, so I'd tag around with them. You know, we'd play baseball out in the street or up against the wall or the steps, and um, I was pretty much a tomboy, so I've always been um, somewhat competitive and always wanted to be involved in sports, so and that's something that our parents wanted, too, to keep us busy and out of trouble. <laughs> female sports in the city and across the state became established and perhaps no one was better at the beginning than the West Catholic basketball teams of coach Patty Tabaldi. And she was a second parent really um, for as much as she yelled and demanded a lot from her her team um, off court she was an extra parent that actually guided you um, through additional endeavors as a matter of fact I still keep in contact with her um, to this day. Women's basketball West Catholic was the thorn in our side. We could never beat them, and Patty Tabaldi, their coach, had our number, and um, all she would have to do was put the press on us, and we couldn't handle that. But uh, we did manage to beat them one year at West Catholic, so that was a highlight, I would think. But the neat thing about what that was, when West Catholic went on to the state championship uh, and played at Jenison Fieldhouse at Michigan State, our team went there to cheer them on. So th again, that healthy respect, even though we were competitors on the floor, uh, we supported them. Her Falcons won four city championships in the last five years of the decade. Led by star Kathy Grzegorski, they also won the 1979 Class B state championship. Premier basketball player. Killed us, actually, several times. Just because I'm biased, of course, West was best. <laughs> but that's only me. The city league was a tough league. It was always the league that all the other OK divisions wanted to be. Then the Falcons repeated defeat in 1990 with coach Mike Braunschneider calling the shots. West Catholic football also ruled the state during the 1970s. The Falcons won a mythical state championship with an undefeated season in 1974, then also went unbeaten in 1976 and 1977 to become the city's first playoff qualifier. In 1979, West was state runner-up. In 1975, the first year of the playoffs, Union and coach Jake Sacconi went unbeaten and barely missed the first playoffs, which included only four teams per class. Union and Creston took turns ruling the court in boys basketball in the 1970s and 80s. The Red Hawks won three consecutive league championships led by Billy Burress and James McCoy. Creston took over later in the decade. Coach Jim Haskins' Polar Bears, led by Tim Bracey, Bennett Gay, and Melvin McLaughlin, won the 1977 title, then began a run of three consecutive city titles from 1980 through 82. Uh, about five or six of our players are coaching right now, and, and uh, uh, Bennett Gay, who played on our, our team in uh, 77, and he was All-State, All-City, uh, went on to college. He's, he's coached three teams in the city, Central Union and Creston, and won titles at all of them. And it's just great to see him uh, be successful. But he also has given back things to the community. And there's others that are coaching also in the city. Others are administrators that, that played at Creston. Um, some at Ottawa right now, some at Central. Great, which is good to, to see. And that, makes you feel good that you have that. And constantly when you see the people, they, they remember. They remember and bring back things. And you bring back the memories of, of being at Creston. And uh, those were great days, fun days. Then Union took over again. Under coach Ed Christman and led by Bobby Springer, Michael Pop Sims, and Brad Sutton, the Red Hawks ran off two city titles, three district and two regional crowns in a three year span. Ottawa Hills' rich basketball tradition got richer in the 1980s thanks to coach Camilla Carter and her girls. Ottawa won five regional championships in the decade, capped by the Class A state championship team of 1989 that was led by Rashida Hickman and Evelyn Baskin. The Ottawa boys, coached by Jim Eddy, added a fourth basketball title to the school's trophy case in 1997. That same calendar year, the Grand Rapids Christian Girls, coached by Al Vandenbosch and led by the Gallert twins, Brianne and Brooke, 
picked up a third state title for their school. Also in the 1980s, Creston's boys won five consecutive swimming championships under coach Gary Vanderlinde, for whom the school pool is named. The Creston girls took half of the softball titles in the decade under the coaching of Dick Ott. West Catholic football continued its domination begun in the 1970s, even after Fred Julian handed the coaching reins to Tim Cohane. The Falcons won six conference titles in the 1980s and made five appearances in the state playoffs. And now, several City League teams are carrying impressive streaks of domination to the end of the conference. Christian's girls have never lost a league match in soccer, 94 in a row and counting toward a 12th consecutive league title. In swimming, the Christian girls' swimmers went 19 years in a row without losing a meet until they fell to Catholic Central this year. Catholic Central's hockey team has won every city title since the sport began in the 1980s, and Union's bowlers of both genders are about equally dominant. They've lost only two of 89 matches in the past four years. And I, of course, I guess I would be called a traditionalist. You kind of look back on the way it was, but you have to be uh, human enough to know that it's not that way anymore, that it's changed, well, the games and everything else. It teaches you about, you know, teamwork, working with others, working with people who are different from you, um, the uh, work ethic, um, sacrifice and commitment, those big things that you really need in your adult life. The City League, um, in general, it, it kind of helps, it gives the kids something to look forward to. Some of these kids come from, you know, broken families at home, and sports is a way for them to get away. Sports is something that they look forward to doing. Um, a lot of kids, you know, they might not excel in the classroom as they should, but when they step on the field or on the basketball court or when they're running track, they might can, you know, excel in that and be the best that they can be. It wasn't just a matter of playing against somebody in another uniform that may live 40 miles away from you. I mean, these were people that you knew. I mean, you bumped into them uh, at the barbershop. Uh, we did cut our hair in the 60s. Uh, uh, in you sat next to them in church. You bumped into them in the store. I mean, you knew these people more than just basketball players. I think sports is a great way to meet people to learn uh, the values of responsibility and respect. And um, I definitely got that from participating in this league, for sure. Well, I think what, what attracted me and I think what, what attracts other coaches to, to be a coach or their desire to be a coach is to see um, young lives transform athletically. Teaching kids to be good athletes, teaching kids to be good students, it, it's, it's parallel. If you're competing against the best, then that certainly has to help you perform. So it takes a village to raise a child. I was raised by the city, by the city league. Helped me to become the person that I am, that I was then, the athlete. Even the athletes from the other schools helped me to be the athlete that I became. If you could guarantee me that I could, uh, we could win if we got together, got some kids, we could win, you know, do well and I have to win state championships. Yeah, I, I could probably do it right again tomorrow. Just intense rivalries is what I think of. I think of, you know, Catholic and West, and, and I can remember every tip off of every single one of those games for us because the, the atmosphere was electric. The, the gyms were packed. I mean, there was standing room only every single time we played, either at their place or at ours. So. I guess I just think of the, the great rivalries and the good memories that I had. Yeah, I loved it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Would I coach again? Definitely. Uh, you know, you can't, a lot of people have, have told me how fortunate I am because you run into people that you've known for 40, 50 years. They remember you, you remember them. There's a bond that's there, uh, not only with, with those in the classroom, but even more so with those of the people that you've coached because you're with them day in and day out. And uh, you can't pay people enough to have that kind of a relationship and a memory that's, that's lasting for your entire life. Very soon, 
the City League will be no more. But for those who have been a part of it, we will never forget.